Hey, I'm Caleb Wadger from DIY Video Guy, and this is the last video on why I like using Premiere Pro. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about stuff outside of Premiere that works with Premiere. So plugins and other apps that integrate really well with Premiere that I either use all the time or I have friends that swear by. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one. First one is Film Convert. And Film Convert is a color correcting app that you can put inside of Premiere. And it also works with apps like uh, Final Cut Pro 10, but the one in Premiere is a little bit better in my opinion. So inside of Premiere, you can use this to emulate film stock. So they have a bunch of different kinds of films that they've taken the color from and you can use them within what you're doing. But there are other features within it like choosing which camera you have and what picture profile you've used are really helpful when you're trying to get a certain look on what you shot. So here's the Film Convert website. You can see that it's on a bunch of different platforms, but I'm gonna show you the Premiere option first. So let's go over to Premiere and Film Convert just shows up in your effects. So if you just type in Film Convert after you've installed it, you can go ahead and drag it to a clip, which I've already done here. And then once you activate it, you can see the clip changes automatically because it's bringing in some defaults. But as you work your way down, I'm gonna go ahead and make this full screen here. You work your way down, you get to choose what kind of camera you have. So make would be the company that makes it, the model here, so shot on a 5D Mark III. I'm pretty sure I was just shooting on standard, but they have things like Technicolor and some of the more flatter profiles as well. So I'll click this back over to standard and then that, aligns the app with the camera and the colors it automatically is creating a little bit better. And so you wanna make sure to download the profiles for Film Convert of the cameras that you own. So now you go to that and let me minimize a little bit. You can do things like mess with exposure right inside Film Convert. If you don't want to go into Lumetri color panel, you can change the temperature a bunch too. So if you want it colder or warmer, whoa, that was not warmer. 7,000 to make it a little warmer. I'm gonna drop it back to 5,600. And then the next part here, this film settings part is where it really gets powerful. And let me go ahead and make this a little wider so we can see it a little better. So first you have the film stock that you wanna to go to and they have different ones from Kodak, that's KD, Fuji, uh, Ilford, and they have a bunch of different options there. So you can click through each of these and kind of see Maybe Provost 100, that's a little too warm for my liking. Let me go to 400 here. No, 160, that's something I kind of like. And then the size of your frame, if you go all the way down to eight millimeter, it'll make it super grainy. It'll make it look like it was shot on an eight millimeter camera. So let me just go ahead and into out a section here, hit enter to render it, let it preview here. It'll take a few seconds and then you can see you can make your new footage look like it was shot on some old sensor. So you can see it brings in this grain and noise effects to make it look like it was shot on an older camera. I'm not going to want that right now, so I'm gonna go Super 35 full frame. And then the next few are super helpful, the color, curve, and grain. Now, maybe I don't necessarily want to have grain, I still want it to look super sharp, and I just want the colors of film stocks that it has in here. So I could go ahead and just drop the grain all the way down, We'll get rid of some of the grain. Here is no grain on it. Let me undo, put some grain on it. Hard to tell in this image, it's when you hit play that you can really see that grain. If you go to zero grain and then film color is how intense it is adding in this color. So you can actually drop that way down. You can see the big effect in the, in the blue here. Let me go ahead and go to something a little bit more extreme. Portrait 400 here. And if I mess with the film color, you can see it's less intense down to zero, back up to 100, and you get more control. So maybe if you only want a little bit of a subtle change, you go 20 or 25%, and it's not like, holy cow, you just put film convert all over all your stuff. Then you can do other things like color correction, as well as they have color wheels here. You can mess with levels and move these around as well if you want to make it a little bit darker or lighter and you have changes there. And then you can render your, your different clips into out and get the final result from Film Convert. So there's 
a lot to be said about this app. I should probably make a video all about it, but it's just a simple way to get a stylized look to your footage that's outside of Premiere that works really well with it. So I realized when I was making all of these different apps that a lot of these are made by Red Giant, which in no way is sponsoring this or has partnered with me on this video. It, they just make a lot of really good video editing additions to apps that already exist. So the first one I like to use is Pluralize. And Pluralize is something that I use when I shoot multicam. So if I have more than one camera, and even if I have one camera and one audio source, if there are a lot of clips, I'll still bring them into Pluralize and then export from there into somewhere like Premiere. So let's take a look at Pluralize and what you can do in it. So in Pluralize, you can make these different buckets for new cameras or uh, new new audio. And so these, these buckets, these bins as they call them, are basically like devices. So on this, I had two cameras and an audio recorder. And I want to sync up all these clips. It was a tutorial, he was teaching things. I had one main camera, that was actually camera two here. You can see it's a little bit better looking. It's a C100 Mark II. I jump over to this, you can see the colors off a little bit. Maybe it doesn't look as sharp. This is a 5D Mark III, but I can bring in all of these clips. So I go make the bins for everything, click that I wanna make the clips and, and bring them in. And then once I have them all down in, in the section, I click synchronize and it'll go through, it'll analyze waveforms on all of them. And usually it takes a little longer than this. This one was just already done and it's fairly simple, but you can see synchronize, does a little calculation, makes a joyful sound and it's all set to go. And then you can export this to somewhere like Premiere Pro. It makes an XML file. Then you can just open that XML file inside of Premiere. So let me go ahead and export this. Let me go ahead and show where that is in Finder. And I'm going to put it on my desktop so I can find it easily. Go over to Premiere, go ahead and go to the project, double click, go desktop, open this XML file. And the XML file has information about where all the video files are, as well as where to place them in a timeline. And it will make a sequence and import that footage. So you can see here, before I open the synced sequence, it has the files from the audio recorder, as well as from the two cameras. Drop down menu, you can see all the files were brought in. And then if I open the synced sequence, which is the sequence that was made in Pluralize, it, go ahead, it, it has all of this information here make this area a little bigger here, so you can see. And it has all the different tracks. It has the video one with video one, it has video two with audio two, and so it has even separated the left and right channels for these as well for me. So if I go like this and I have different microphones plugged in into different inputs on my camera, it brings all that automatically, as well as the actual audio file and audio recorder that had the good sound for what I was doing. So what I could essentially do is I could solo the audio track here and the audio from the other angles wouldn't be playing. You can often put on a smart and so I just have my good audio. The other audio is still there if I need it, but I just have it muted for now. And I could also go ahead and select all of these, right click them, go ahead and nest. Then once they're nested, I can go ahead and right click and enable multicam, and then I can turn on the multicam viewer here. Shift zero, I think, and then I can go through and as it's playing, I'm just gonna mute it so you guys don't have to listen. I can click through, pick different angles, and then if I zoom in down here, you can see it actually chose those angles while I click through them on playback and it'll play those two angles. And so that's how I use Pluralize quickly. <laughs> that's how I use Pluralize to bring in footage from multiple cameras and devices, sync them up, bring them into Premiere, nest the different camera angles, make a multi-cam really fast, and then you can delete the audio you don't need and you could group the video and audio together so that when you cut one or move one, it moves the other one as well. So you can go a couple extra steps to make it exactly like a perfectly linked together multicam clip. But this is the basics of how I use Pluralize to bring it in. So that was the second app. The third app, let me go back over to Chrome here, is from Red Giant and it's actually a suite. So Magic Bullet Suite is 
pretty much everything that has to do with making your footage look really good. And a few of them are Magic Bullet Looks and Magic Bullet Colorista. And these are different apps that you can use in Premiere or kind of externally to color correct and color grade your footage. And they also have a film one. Mojo makes things look uh, really dramatic and kind of Hollywood. Cosmo is one I've used before that softens skin and blemishes and stuff. Denoiser is one I'm gonna talk about later. LUT Buddy will help you bring in lookup tables if you're shooting with specific color picture profiles and stuff. So this suite is not cheap. Uh, it looks like $800 new, but a little bit cheaper if you're academic, a little bit cheaper if you're upgrading from a previous version. But I really like Colorista. I've used this on other people's uh, computers and stuff, and this has really good control over different color wheels as well as um, the keyer is really well, and you can do things like just work on skin because it has an overlay that'll work over it. This is just a really solid tool for doing some color correcting. And then for color grading, maybe Magic Bullet looks is what you want to do. And so they have a lot of built-in looks that are based off of movies and other looks that you might have interest in. They say they have over 200 look presets from different TV shows and stuff but they also have really powerful tools for you to build your own and change exposure and bring in lights and do all the different kinds of things you'd wanna do. But it's it's more than just sliders and, and different drop-down menus. Looks is really intuitive for the order that you play stuff in and do the edit in, and it's something I want to dive into more and do a little bit better with grading-wise as well. So I would definitely look at both uh, the Magic Bullet suite where it has uh, it has looks and colorista in it if you want to really take your color grading to the next level and don't want to go to a super advanced tool like DaVinci Resolve or something like that. So the next one that I recommend is actually Universe. And this is something that my friend Thomas Frank over at College Info Geek really recommends. And these are a lot of effects and layers that you can add to your videos and give them that extra kind of polish and look and effect to them. So they have a lot of different things, you know, film transitions, uh, some camera shake, this glow is something I know he uses. Let me try to find one that uh, would be something, things like split screens to do something fancy. Uh, they have ones that make it look like you're looking through a TV screen, quick picture in picture things you can create, uh, add textures to things, add lights, fisheye distortion, there's so many different things in here. I think there's like a hundred different options for you to bring in your footage and add these simple effects to them to add just another layer of polish and another layer of quality to the videos that you're making. And this would definitely be something that I would recommend if you are trying to make your videos look a little bit fancier. And the last one here I wanna recommend is Denoiser. And so, you get a lot of noise in your footage when you're shooting in low light or you're shooting with a high ISO. So if you're shooting in the middle of the night and there's not much ambient light, you're gonna to have to boost your ISO to a higher level and that's gonna bring in noise into the image. So with Denoiser, you can see in the screenshot example, it will take a lot of that distortion, a lot of that noise that gets added to your video and it will analyze all of it and kind of smooth it out. And so you have to kind of play around with the settings inside a denoiser, but for $100, if you have some footage that you really want to make look really clean and you shot it at night, whether that's of stars or something more cinematic that you, you filmed at nighttime and there's just way too much noise, getting something like denoiser 2 is well worth the money and figuring out how to use the settings to tweak it. So this is just another reason why I like using Premiere. I really like to have these external apps and yeah, a lot of these are available in Final Cut, but I've tried to use some of these in Final Cut before and they're buggy, they're not as integrated. You can't just open them up in a little panel. You kind of have to use an external app sometimes. So I really like how these are integrated directly into Premiere and it's just a Premiere effect most of the time that you can drop down and make little changes in without having to open up another app or export your video somewhere into like DaVinci Resolve and then color correct it and bring it back. So I highly recommend you check out some of these apps if you want to take your editing and Premiere to the next level. So 
Thanks so much for watching through this video. And if you watched all five videos about why I like Premiere Pro, you probably heard that I have a Premiere Pro 101 course, which is about learning Premiere Pro. So these are a little bit more advanced tools, but the Premiere Pro 101 course will walk you through the basics on the layout of the software, importing the footage, getting your sequences started and syncing up multi camera and video and audio together doing some basic color correcting and grading as well as editing quickly and then exporting the video with the proper settings for places like YouTube or Vimeo. You can check out that course at DIYvideoguide.com slash Premiere 101. And thanks so much for watching this video. We'll be releasing shortly our full paid course on Premiere Pro, so be on lookout for that as well. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in another video. Cheers.